Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. Colonel Dana Duthie's career as an Air Force fighter pilot, the basis for many of the experiences in his books, all called Action Lovers Delights, exciting, believable military thrillers, his Air Force career spanned 24 years, pilot training in Georgia and instructor in Texas to the skies over Southeast Asia and from flying the F-4 Phantom in Germany to the F-16 Falcon in South Carolina, Korea, and Germany. The book we're talking about today is Tremble, based in South Korea, where Duthi was a squadron commander at the 80th Fighter Squadron flying their F-16, 1985-86, North Korea is at it again. Kim Jong-un raids and kills several U.N. weapons inspectors and holds three other hostages at one of the suspected nuclear sites. The U.S. unilaterally mounts a SEAL team raid to rescue the hostages. Dana is also the author of Dark Rain and Phantoms of the Shaw. Colonel Duthie also paid his dues with three headquarters assignments and professional schooling. Retired from the Air Force in 1992, lives now Broomfield in Steamboat Springs, Colorado with his wife, they have two children, three grandchildren nearby, and one of the grandsons currently assigned to the USS Carl Vinson nuclear aircraft carrier in the Pacific. Welcoming back to the program to talk about Tremble is the author, Dana Duthie. Dana, welcome back to the program. It's great to have you with us once again. Oh, thanks, Rick. Appreciate it. Enjoying it very much. Well, this is good. We talked about Dark Rain, and you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on to uh, the podcast of that show. You can uh, get the video version by going to YouTube or going to our website and clicking on videos, and you'll be able to do that there as well. Tremble, the book we're talking about, Dana, also the author of Phantoms of the Shaw. You know, I mentioned in the beginning, it's interesting, you've got a, a grandson that's on the USS Carl Vinson that has to be a great source of pride for you that uh, he followed in the military as well in working on the aircraft carrier. Oh, it absolutely is. He uh, probably one of the best times of my life was I got to swear him in uh, after I had retired. They let me do it get back in my uniform, which I had to have let out and I had to get a haircut. <laughs> but <laughs> I got to swear him into the Navy and it was a surprise to him. He didn't know it. Ah. And uh, he is, he's definitely doing well. He's the guy on the top of the deck that, you know, winds up and points to the sky for Tom Cruise before they let the, the, the catapult loose oh, yes. it's called a yellow shirt. One of the most dangerous jobs uh, uh, that there is. I was going to yeah. say, boy, you watch some video. I've never been on there, but you watch the video, and it seems like everybody is uh, is in danger, aren't they, on on those, those aircraft carriers? Oh yeah, they 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 almost lose somebody overboard on every cruise. Uh, they don't lose them completely; they go pick them up, but they can get blown off those things in a in a heartbeat. What's it like landing on one of those? I don't know. I never had to do that. Uh, <laughs> I'm thankful of that. Uh, yes. The runways that I landed on weren't moving very well, <laughs> very much, so it wasn't too bad. But uh, they're actually now, with the, the new technology, the, the, the airplane almost lands itself. They lock in to the ball, as it's called, and it just flies it right on down and touches down. Obviously, the pilot's not taking his hands off the controls, but it's a lot easier than it used to be back in the World War II in the Pacific. The the airplanes that you flew, the F-4 Phantom and the F-16 Falcon, uh, how much of that was sort of computer taking over? Was it, a, a, you know, 50-50? How did, how did that work? Because you, you hear that, you hear that with commercial pilots that a, a lot of them will say a lot of it is none, done now by, by computer. What was it like when you were flying? Yeah, the F-4 didn't have that kind of a technology at all. Uh, we had, you know... Uh, you locked on to navigational aids, but that's about it. The F-16 as well, it's called the electric jet because it's it's basically uh, because of the uh, way the, the thing is designed. Uh, if it didn't have the, the batteries working and everything else, it would be, it would fly out of control. And that's how they can actually, you know, design that airplane so it can t uh, fly such tight turns and accelerate going straight up and everything else. But it's not like uh, some of the bigger airplanes in the Air Force now, the newer ones and definitely newer airlines where you're right, they just can, they can 
dial in a, a, a destination, the airplane will fly there and actually land itself. Uh, that's not the case with uh, either F-4 or F-16. Did you like that, that you actually sort of had a better feel? I, I'm saying that now as a non-pilot, almost would have a better feel for the plane because you're actually flying it. Yeah, in fact, when the, they first came out with the F-16, the stick, which is actually on the side, it's called a side stick controller, it's not between your legs, uh, it didn't move. It just uh, it sensed the pressure that the pilot would put on it to the nose up, nose down, left or right. Well, we, guys right off the bat did not like that. So they went in and they changed it, so now it moves a quarter of an inch. So you actually get the idea that you're the one flying the airplane, even though the electronics are, are moving the, uh, uh, the flight controls based on the pressure that you're putting on the stick. So, yeah, I definitely uh, needed that kind of feedback, especially Dana, when you're going to pull 9Gs. Yeah, okay, that's that's something else. We could do a program just based on several programs just based on everything you just said there. Uh, Dana, this is why his books are so lifelike, because he's been there. He understands what it is to be involved in in military situations like that. His books are Dark Rain, Phantoms of the Shah, and the one we're talking about uh, specifically on the program today, which is Tremble. Let's talk about that. It's uh, based in, in South Korea. You have a history with South South Korea. Uh, talk about that and how this whole story developed in, in your mind and maybe some of it actually unfolding as, uh, in real life. Yeah, uh, I was a squadron commander uh, of an F-16 squadron in South Korea, a very uh, uh, good squadron with a lot of history on it. They were they flew in the, in South Pacific in P-38s in World War II. Uh, we're now in the F-16. Uh, the good thing about having a squadron, being a squadron commander there is I had complete attention of all the pilots because their wives and families weren't with them. So we worked hard. We played hard. And we had a real mission. And the, one of the missions was to watch and, and be careful with uh, North Korea. And at the time, it wasn't actually Kim Jong-un. I used his name in the book. It was his father. Yes. Uh, and they were, uh, uh, they, they were developing nuclear uh, capabilities, still are, of course. And uh, we actually had a couple of targets uh, set up there just in case we needed it. So... That's where I got the idea of it, and that's uh, how I built the story around that. Talk about Brad Mitchell. Appears in in several of the books that you've written. The the 80th Squadron Commander. Uh, talk a little bit about him. How you developed that character, and how much of that is somewhat autobiographical. Pretty much all of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's how it, that's 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 how I developed it. Everything that he does uh, was what I have done other than the actual, you know, flights, uh, in the, uh, in the conflict, in the fictional story. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, there's the, the, in Tremble, for example, he, he takes the squadron down to the Philippines for training and, and he has issues with, uh, one of his enlisted guys who falls in love. Uh, so pretty much Brad Mitchell, with the exception of the last part of dark rain, where he worked as a or lived uh, worked as a wing commander at Andrews Air Force Base outside of D.C. I never did that, but uh, pretty much all the rest of Brad Mitchell is Dana Duthie. You know, I mentioned in there his call sign. His call sign is Conan, and that was my call sign. Ah, interesting. So good information as you're reading the book written by Dana Duthie. And that's D-U-T-H-I-E. His website is danaduthiebooks.com. Find him at um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the usual places. Tremble, we're talking about. His other books are Dark Rain and Phantoms of the Shah. In there, you've got like a the, the Navy SEAL array that they're, they're taking part in. Uh, talk about that because as you're reading reviews, people are are getting sort of a different side of a SEAL operation as well. Talk about their involvement. Well, that's, that's interesting too. I did not know, for example, until my grandson got on the carrier that every carrier has a SEAL team with it. And the SEAL teams are, you know, obviously have been pretty famous. The SEAL Team 6 got Osama bin Laden and, yep. and uh, the the. Uh, captain of the current captain of my grandson's ship, the Vincent, 
is an ex seal from seal team six so uh, i use them as the in both uh tremble and dark rain as uh, and in fact phantoms of the shaw there's some seals uh involved in that story as well uh, they would be the guys who would go in and try to you know rescue uh somebody up north in North Korea or to go into Libya and pull back an airplane that's been stolen. Uh, it would be them and or the, the special forces from the Army. Yeah. Tremble is the book we're talking about on the program today. Dana Duthie, uh, you sort of see things getting back to to somewhat normal during the course of, of the book. Is there any such thing as normal in dealing with North Korea? I mean, you've seen You've seen that firsthand. I, I get the impression we never should take our eyes off North Korea and, and Kim Jong-un. I definitely agree with that. The guy's a, he's nuts. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't say certifiable, but there sure is a lot of evidence. You know, he, he wears cowboy boots around. He, he, he does everything that uh, he throws his people in jail for doing. Uh, his father was a little bit better, a little bit calmer. Uh, and his grandfather a little bit better there, but he, he's getting more and more, I think, out of control. This, you know, President Trump uh, had some sort of a relationship with him, he thinks, but I don't think uh, it, it's gone anywhere or will go anywhere. Uh, well, especially after uh, the, the election, who knows? But uh, he, he is definitely an issue. So there is no such thing as normal with North Korea. They get a little bit of that insight in uh, in his book, Tremble. Again, it's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, danduthiebooks.com. That, that information will be on our website this week in america.us. The other book that you've written about, Phantoms of the Shah, give us sort of a brief overview. Uh, again, I mentioned in the beginning, I can remember as this unfolds, and as you're reading, you can sort of see rip from the headlines in, in, in what you're writing about there. Overview of, of, of Phantoms. Yeah, the Phantom story actually uh, is a true story to a point when I was flying the F-4 in Germany in the 70s. We actually took a, uh, a trip, a uh, training trip, took the squadron to Shiraz, Iran, in southern Iran, and flew with Iranian pilots uh, in both training and side-by-side. -side. Uh, we were training them. Uh, this was just before they kicked out the Shah and all hell broke loose in Tehran. Uh, so that, that's a true story to a point. Uh, the, the fictional part of it that led to bombing Shiraz or anything else was, was not. Uh, but uh, there was a point in there where we needed to get out of town in a hurry. And I took my flight and faked radio failure with the tower so that I could get us airborne because if I didn't, I wasn't sure we were going to get airborne. So that that's a true story, true part of the story as well. Yeah, we've got Brad Mitchell. Uh, Dana's got Brad Mitchell back in Phantoms of the Shaw as well. You mentioned the, the last time, and please go check out uh, the podcast, and you'll find it on our website, and iHeart uh, Podcast, Apple, Amazon, Spotify, all of those. Uh, and talking about the, uh, the, the first book, Dark Rain, Talk about working maybe on another book. You've mentioned that a fourth book is sort of uh, sort of formulating in your mind there. How are you coming on that? And in overall, uh, if you feel comfortable talking about the topic, yeah, it basically is when Brad or when I was a uh, young captain and flying in Southeast Asia as a forward air controller in the OV-10, which is a twin-engine prop aircraft uh, over Cambodia, and uh, again that was. I really did that. Uh, I, I got there right at the end of the war in Cambodia. So the story that I'm, that I'm developing will, would be a, uh, a return into Cambodia. And then basically it, the name of the book will be, if I write it, will be Convoy Cover. Uh, it's a convoy of uh, boats coming, uh, ships coming up the uh, Mekong River to bail out the folks that are surrounded at Phnom Penh, the capital of Korea, and uh, our, our capital of Cambodia, and our activities to keep them safe. So that, that's that's kind of the gist of what it's going to be. And it would just unfortunately, I, you know, I did these books backwards, sort of like Star Wars, I guess. Dark uh, yes, Rain was yes. at the end of <laughs> Mitchell's career, and Tremble was just before that. 
the Phantoms was just before that, and this one would be the, the first of, of four stories. If the if you fortunately you don't have to read one to read the others. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to mention, these are all self-contained, so you can read all three, and I would recommend that, or you could pick one, two, three, and, and read it, not necessarily in, in any order. A couple minutes left in the program. I'm, you're very descriptive in all of the books. Did you keep a diary with some of these details, or are these parts of your life that you just, you almost feel like you lived them a couple of weeks ago? It, it stays with you all of your life. Yeah, uh, especially the, the 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 flying parts, and then some of the <laughs> some of the hijinks that the, <laughs> that the guys get into. Well, yes, uh, yes. Th- those those are easy to remember. Uh, but I did use Google a few times as well, so uh, <laughs> to get back and con- confirm, for example, that that's what you know that part of the airplane was or whatever. Yes, but, uh, I mean, most of it just from plain memory. And I, I also queried a couple of my good friends, uh, co- co-workers, co-pilots, uh, on is this the way it was in your memory as well? So. You know, you enlighten and entertain with your books. From your standpoint, as you go back and when you started this series with, with Dark Rain, what's, what's it like for you? Is it fun going back and reliving these moments and, and telling the story? Oh, absolutely. It, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and and especially like I said with the dark rain portion, the, I, I uh, dedicate and actually in Phantom I I say that I dedicate these stories to the people and the uh, that I w- worked with and for and worked for me uh, throughout the, my Air Force career, and that made it a lot of fun to get back into uh, you know how did how did we do these things and you know. Um, coming up with a, a story that they would appreciate as well. Well, yeah, and you mentioned that. I'm glad you said that because you have that in the books. This really is a tribute to all of the, all of the military that uh, that came before you and got us to where we are in, in terms of world standing in, in the day to in, in where we are today. Absolutely. Yesterday was Veterans Day, and I'm proud of every one of them as much as I'm proud of myself. A minute or so left here, and, well, and, yeah. and Will, you should be. I go back to your grandson. Has he read your books? Is he like, wow, uh, Grandpa? You actually, wow, you you did this? Yeah. In fact, <laughs> he, the first one, Dark Rain. He he gave it to his captain. Now here here's a you know a one striper on the, on the deck. Uh, his captain had actually met one of the subjects in my book. A guy named Boomer. Uh, they actually know each other, and uh, so after Carter read the book, uh, he happened to, you know, he met the captain one day and asked him if he wanted it, and he gave it to him. So it, the captain's read my books too. So yeah, uh, he's read them both, and uh, he, he'll get a copy of the third one here pretty quick. That's just uh, what an amazing legacy there. That that's so exciting. But the time has gone by so quickly. We did two shows with uh, with Dana. This one uh, on the book focusing on Trump. We'll be talking about the others as well. Dark Rain is in uh, the podcast network. You'll find it by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us or wherever you you listen to podcast. The website is danaduthybooks.com. That's Dana's website. Great information there. It's uh, very easy to navigate. It's D U T H I E danaduthybooks.com. You'll find it at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, the usual places. The books, Dark Rain, Tremble, and Phantoms of the Shaw. Uh, Dana, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Uh, congratulations on the success, the amazing stories you tell in these three books. Looking forward to book number four, and hopefully we can talk about that. Thank you for spending some time with us the last couple of weeks on the program. Well, thank you very much, Rick. I appreciate uh, the time, and uh, nice talking to you. Thank you. It's been fun talking to Dana Duthie, his website, danaduthiebooks.com. Information, of course, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.